Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show, where we cover everything inside a beautiful Burley Stadium with the Greenville Green Devils. As always, I'm here with Green Devils head coach, Eddie Spradlin. Coach, how are we doing this Monday Good, afternoon? Man. Thanks for being here. Absolutely love coming out here. A little bit of a new location this week. That's the beautiful part about being here in beautiful Burley Stadium is there's about 10 different locations you can do a show at. And we've done it in front of the new Jumbotron that got reinstalled about or got installed about two years ago now at the end of the 2022 season. Uh, don't have it on today, but we do have that it says state champions in front of that. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a flex in and of itself. But <laughs> you've got the opportunity to play for a region championship this week in a big time game on Friday night against Elizabethan in Burley Stadium. Before we talk about that though, you had to get past Northview. We had talked about that last week. You couldn't look past Northview. You had to get by them first to be able to have that big time game against Betsy. How were you able to get it done on Friday night? You know, really, we, we met those keys that we talked about. We were able to run the football uh, really well. We played good on uh, a defense and uh, trying to limit their quarterback. He didn't hurt, hurt us rushing. I think for the game, he was minus 11 yards rushing. So, you know, that's one of the big keys we talked about. You know, that he could really run. Uh, had been running the football against some uh, good football teams, so it was a good challenge for us. Um, and we were, we were good on special teams. Absolutely. We were able to cover. Uh, a lot of kickoffs and get continue to get better at that. We caused a, a turnover on a kickoff. We're perfect on uh, PAT. So really excited how we, we were able to return a kickoff return for a touchdown. So uh, really excited about how we played on Friday night. And then you look through the stats like we always do. Greenville 371 total yards. Uh, Northview just eclipsed 200 with 221. Caden Ball, another terrific night. He was very efficient, seven of nine passing, 139 yards. Two passing touchdowns, 47 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown. We usually go through his stat line, and usually it's his passing yards that are down a little bit more and his rushing yards that are either surpassing those passing yards or they're about even. You had him throwing the ball a little bit more in this game too, and I think that was something that we had talked about is maybe you would pass the ball a little bit more against the Cougars. So what did you kind of see on their defense that allowed you to pass the ball a little bit more? You know, they were – if we even when we were going four wide, they try to get eight guys in a box. So uh, – um, you know, obviously we want to start with the running game and try to run the ball, but when you're putting that many guys in the box, uh, it's going to open up a lot of our passing game stuff. So we were able to hit some uh, big passes and uh, connect on some good balls. Uh, you know, the first touchdown we got, we were throwing the football. He saw an opening, took off running, and uh, took it for – probably 70 yards for a nice long run but you know he continues to get better for us to like we've talked about if we're going to continue to keep on playing we got to be able to throw the football and we continue to improve at that each week the other half of that dynamic duo with Carson Quill and 13 rushes 160 yards a trio of touchdowns uh I said it on the Saturday morning show if anybody from TWSAA is watching he should be a Mr. Football candidate at this point during the season yeah we're another terrific doubt. night you know, he uh, a tremendous football player and we talk about it all the time, even a better young man. But, um, you know, he had, uh, I believe, a 70 or 80 yard touchdown uh, called back on Friday as well. And I think he had another big run that was called back. But, uh, you know, just a really good football player. We get the ball to him, you know, wherever we can. If it's throwing it to him, run it, uh, let him run the football, he makes big things happen. And then those touchdowns that Caden Ball had, you talk about the two passing touchdowns, both of those went to Jariah Griffin. Uh, great night from him. I've talked about it a few times with Zayden Anderson where he'll have two catches and two touchdowns. It was Jariah's turn to have a stat line like that where he had two catches that both ended up in the end zone in 79 total yards. You really started to see him blossom more in your offense as the weeks have gone by. I know we've said that before and I've said that too, but you really saw it on Friday night where he was able to turn it upfield both times he got the ball and scored. Yeah, he did a really good job when he caught the football and get up the field. Um, you know, we threw <coughs> – Zayden had some good uh, catches as well out there. But, you know, you got two guys like that on the edge, and we're doing a tremendous job blocking out there. You know, uh, Cole Franklin had a, a nice long run, but he's doing a great job blocking. Uh, Cole Smith, Kane Ricker all doing tremendous jobs. Uh, you know, all those long runs that we had had a, a good block by a receiver. You don't see that a lot of times. So, uh Really proud of how everybody's playing as a team. And like I said, it always starts with up front. Uh, didn't have a, one of our offense, starting offensive linemen in there Friday, but uh, had C.J. Reyes step in there at left tackle for us, and, and he did a really good job, and we were able to run the football. Really excited where we're at offensively at this point. I love talking about the offense, too, because those are the ones that put the points on the scoreboard. But as we always say, offense is only one-third of the game. You've got defense and special teams, which are – equally as important and play equally as a part in the football game. And you spoke about how important it is to play well on special teams and play well on defense. Well, 
when you score on offense, defense, and special teams, you got a chance to win the game. You've got a very good chance to win the football game. When you score on defense, it goes up. When you score on special teams, it goes up even more, and you're able to do both. Uh, you had Zayden Anderson with a pick six, and then Taryn Clarity with a kickoff return touchdown. I mean, how crucial is it to get two touchdowns on the defensive and special team side of the ball after how great of an offensive night you had? Yeah, you know, it was really good. We played really good defensively, um, you know, especially, you know, our starters up until that last drive of the uh, first half, and then we, we try to sub a few guys out and give some guys some breaks, but and we ended up let them get in the end zone there, and those plays were – continued by some uh, pass interference calls that uh, looked like to me were pretty good coverage, but uh, <laughs> that's beside the point. Yeah. Uh, you know, really excited about how those guys are playing and just playing hard, flying around and making things happen. And how good did it feel to be back home? I didn't realize yeah. that you hadn't been home since August. Yeah, August. I believe it was August 30th against uh, Dobbins Bennett. So uh, really nice to be there and glad we're here for senior night on Friday night. It's crazy when you look at the schedule. I think you had the first two games at home and you didn't get back home until the ninth game on your schedule. Yeah. That's something that you really don't see a lot of times. No. But, man, it was – I guess you can call yourself the Road Warriors this year because you were away from home for a good amount of time. And the good news is we talked about last week, you were home against Northview, you're home against Elizabethan this week. And if you're able to win that game, then you're home for a few more weeks throughout the playoffs also. But you've got that big time game on Friday night. I'm excited to talk about it, but before we talk about it, we need to get a break in first. So we'll get a word in from our sponsors first and we'll be right back to talk about that big time game against Elizabethan here on Grassroots Media. At Corner Pond, the friendly and knowledgeable staff has the experience necessary to help you out regardless of the need. Have an item of value you'd like to pawn or sell? Corner Pond can help. They pawn numerous items of value, including firearms, tools, ammunition, silver, coins, and much more. When you walk through their doors, you'll find well-stocked shelves full of electronics, gaming systems, fishing and hunting equipment, car audio and accessories, and don't forget about the room full of guitars and basses and amplifiers or their outside lawn and garden equipment. Corner Pond is a case knife dealer and carries numerous used knives as well. Stop by and let the friendly staff at Corner Pond help you today at 432 East Bernard Avenue, Greenville, Tennessee. Pizza Inn offers contactless buffet to go with JoJo's Family Feast or anything on our menu for carryout. We also honor birthday parties and cater to businesses and large events. We make it easy. Call us today. Pizza Inn Greenville. For more than 30 years, Tommy's Plumbing has served customers in East Tennessee with licensed and professional plumbing services. From installing your new faucet to replacing your existing piping system, our team at Tommy's Plumbing is trained to handle the job with professionalism, attention to detail, and integrity. By offering warranties on most products installed by our technicians, Tommy's Plumbing stands behind our work, ensuring that your plumbing needs are not only met, but that your problem is solved for the long term. When you need reliable and professional plumbing service, Tommy's is the only call to make. So give us a call today and let us show you the Tommy's difference. Welcome back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show, where we cover everything inside of Burley Stadium with the Greenville Green Devils. As always, I'm here with Greenville head coach Eddie Spradlin. So you've got the big time game on Friday night. It's kind of what the season leads up to when TAA sets your region schedules. They put Elizabeth in as your 10th game in week 11. They do that for a reason, because they expect it to be for the Region 1 4A championship. I don't know how, but they're pretty good at doing that because it's been for the Region 1 4A championship the past I don't know how many years now. On Friday night when you kick off at 7 o'clock, the Region championship will be on the line. You've got the opportunity to win the fourth straight for your school. What's the game plan on Friday night? You know, obviously – <clears throat> it's a big time matchup with a lot of excitement about it. You know, it's going to be a TV game and uh, be a, a, a tremendous uh, amount of fans here for both teams on Friday night. You know, a lot of teams are playing on Thursday night in this area, so there'll be a lot of people at this football game just because they want to see a good high school football. Um, at the end of the day, this is what high school football is all about. You know, two uh, communities that still support their uh, uh, football programs, it's small towns. Uh, it's it's what it's all about. So really excited, but you got to come in here and you got to play with excitement. You got to play, 
can't make mistakes in big time games like that because if you give a, a football team like that another opportunity uh, to get in the end zone, it can get put you behind real quick. So uh, we got to play like we've been playing, continue uh, to work hard during the week, and you know start the day at practice and uh, get three good days of practice and ready to go on Friday night. Let's talk about the seniors. We've talked about it throughout the year how they've won three straight. They've got the opportunity to walk out of this game saying that they're region champs four straight years and that they don't know how it feels to not win a region championship. For those seniors, how what's the excitement level for them going into this game? You know, it's a, a, a team they've battled with since they were in middle school. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they are super excited uh, to be dialed in uh, this week uh, like no other. Uh, we talked about it before the game on Friday. The closer you get to the playoffs, the – the, the more excitement it needs to be and, and the harder you're playing. And, and that's what I, I feel like we'll get from those guys on Friday night. I shouldn't have asked the excitement level. I should have asked the level of focus they've got going into this game yeah, because know, I think there's more focus than there is excitement knowing what's on the line. Yeah, you know, they'll be, you got to be dialed in if you want to win this football game. This is going to be come down to, at the end of the day, who wants it more on either side of, you know, either team. So uh, you got to make sure you're at your best at all times. You, know, you can't take a playoff. Uh, once you do, somebody's going to, you know, make a, a big time opportunity out of something that uh, when you take something off. Let's talk about Elizabeth in a little bit also. They've not won it for three years now. You know they're hungry to win one. They want to snatch that Region 1 4A championship away from you, and I think it would be sweeter for them to take it in Burley Stadium whenever you went up there last year and took it in their home venue. So what do you expect to see from their offense and defense? You know, offensively, they, they're they a little bit of both. They're going to line up and just power football, but at the same time, they can spread you out and throw the ball if they need to. And I've really been doing a lot of more throwing the ball the last few games, but uh, they can be a power football team. They've got big uh, – <laughs> excuse me, three uh, big backs that run the ball really hard. Uh, one of them is probably about 240 that, you know, is a big guy that just runs the ball downhill. Um, big offensive line. Um, they want to be the most physical football team on Friday night. So, you know, it's kind of the same way we want to have our game plan. We're going to be the most physical team. But um, two really good coach football teams getting after it uh, be a big challenge. But defensively, they, they fly around to the football. Um, you play a lot of forefront stuff, really similar to what we do on defense. Uh, but they're, you know, they're being simple on defense and flying around making things happen. And as always, too, at the end of every interview, I've got three keys to the game to ask you about. What are they on Friday night whenever you play Elizabethan? You know, first and foremost, we got to be able to run the football. Um, you know, it's got to be start up front, you know, really good defensive line for them. They've got some big time players on their D line. So it'll uh, be a big challenge, but we've got to, for us to be successful, we've got to be able to run the football. Um, you know, third or secondly, uh, it's going, special teams is a big one. Uh, you've got to be able to uh, win the special teams battle. They got a really good kicker. They get in field goal range. They're going to have an opportunity to kick a field goal. So defensively, you got to keep them out of there. And um, starts with you know everything we do on special teams. So uh, we got to win the special teams battle without a doubt. Uh, and, and and probably third in, in this one, you you can't have turnovers. You yeah. got you got to create turnovers, and, and you can't give up. You can't get the football back to them. Uh, you know, if you punt the football, that's fine. But you turning it over, um, we can't be doing that in a big time game. And we saw how much special teams impacted the game last year with Quentin Brandon's field goal to basically ice the game. And it could be the same this year when you get into a game like this where you've got two hard nosed defenses that know how to stop each other because of how often you all play each other every single season and the playoff matchups that you've had down the road too. So. It'll be a fun time game on. It'll be a fun game on Friday night. Yeah, for night. sure. You know, like you mentioned, we got to continue to play hard defensively, fly around, make things happen, and we got to create turnovers. And as I always say too, get here early because not only is it for the region championship, but if you know Elizabethan, they've got a big band. Yeah. So if you're an Elizabethan fan watching this, you know how big the band is, and it's going to take up about half of that visitor section over there. So if you're a home fan too, get here early because this might be. The most attended game of the year, considering it is Elizabeth and it is for the Region 1 4A championship. And as you said, it's big time football. And it's senior night. Makes it is it senior night, too. On top of that, also. So there will be a lot of people here. Makes it even better. But, Coach, that's all I've got for you this week. Let's sit down next week and let's talk about a Region 1 4A championship. The, that's the plan here. Absolutely. Appreciate Coach, it, man. Go thank Devils. You once again. Absolutely. Thank you all for watching this week's edition of the Marathon Quick Stops Eddie Spradlin Show. We look forward to seeing you all next week here on Grassroots Media.